It's the kind of morbid fascination that draws us to horror movies in the first place that's also what makes body horror such a popular subgenre. We're all a bit messed up, really, but not as messed up as these poor people. I'm Amy from What Culture, and here are 10 more body horror fates worse than death. 10. The Fly 2 Becoming a Gooey Genetic Mess Whilst The Fly 2 may not quite live up to the standards of its Jeff Goldblum starring predecessor, this 1989 follow-up still has plenty going for it. Here it's Martin Brundle, the son of Goldblum's Seth Brundle, who takes centre stage. Aging rapidly due to his unique DNA makeup, Martin has the form of a 25-year-old by the time he's only five years of age. People are eager to unlock the secrets of his DNA and attempt to manipulate young Martin into working out the smarts and science wizardry of his old man's work. By the end of the film, our villain Bartok gets his comeuppance in the most ooey gooey of ways. With Martin having fully transformed into a humanoid fly by this point, he drags Bartok to the telepod and undergoes a gene swapping sequence that once again makes Martin human, but makes a total mess of Bartok. As we see shortly before the Fly 2's credits roll, the character is now a deformed monstrosity who has to be fed via a straw in a dog box. A fitting end for someone who earlier in the film had performed his own twisted genetic experiments on a dog. 9. Slither becoming a bulbous, bloated ball of baby parasites. Way before he was cruising the MCU skies with the Guardians of the Galaxy crew, James Gunn got his start in film by dabbling in horror. Gunn made his full directorial debut with 2006's Slither, which saw a bloke called Grant infected by an alien parasite. Grant begins sprouting tentacles and looking to infect the local townsfolk. His ex-lover Brenda is due her own unfortunate fate too, becoming a bloated ball of goo full of worms with a constant hunger for raw or meat. Brenda only met up with Grant in the first place because she thought the two were going to have sex. Well, the reproduction that takes place wasn't exactly what she had in mind, and she was instead infected by Grant, going on to become the breeder for countless other potential parasites to spawn from. Technically, Brenda does actually die by the time Slither wraps up, with the parasitic worms inside tearing her apart as they make their way out to find their own hosts. The thing is, this poor woman has spent the vast majority of this movie just praying for this death to come. 8. Tokyo Gore Police Endless Mutations Few films in recent memory bring the splatter quite as hard as Tokyo Gore Police. The movie is nuts and just brimming with bloodshed and fantastically brutal scenes. Leading the charge here is Aiki Shina as Ruka, a troubled sort who's tasked with killing off creatures known as engineers, humans who've been infected with a virus that mutates them into walking weapons. Working alongside the police as an engineer hunter, Ruka herself undergoes quite the change. In her quest to find the person responsible for her father's death, she's infected with a tumour that eventually turns her left arm into an alien creature with razor claws. To make matters worse, our central protagonist is later shot in the eye, which her body soon replaces with a cybernetic one, making her more machine than woman. Ruka does end up tracking down the person behind her father's death, and it's the corrupt police commissioner. I mean, who could have seen that coming? But now she's stuck living a life of ever-evolving mutation. 7. Cabin Fever 2016 Begging for your death when looking at remakes that just didn't need to happen, the 2016 do-over of Cabin Fever is right up there. Following the exact same plot as Eli Roth's 2002 debut feature, with the exact same characters saying and doing the exact same things, the only differences are the actors and that it's a little more smooth and shiny compared to the original. Regardless, one moment that does stand out in 2016's Cabin Fever is the slow demise of Karen. Rather than just being killed with a shovel, this time Karen has to suffer a whole lot more. The remake's Karen has her flesh devoured by the movie's central virus. It's a slow, gruesome downward spiral that gets to a point where Karen's jaw is literally hanging off of her face. So worse than death is all this that we actually see Karen begging to be killed, her preferring to die than to be slowly decimated by the virus. By the time Cabin Fever ends, Karen's wish is finally granted, with Paul hitting her several times with a shovel before burning her alive. Six the thing being merged into the monster. It's so obvious it's been right in front of us this whole time. How I could make the first version of this list and not include this one, I honestly don't know, because it is one of the best loved bits of body horror there is. Carpenter's The Thing has more than earned its status as a cult classic, with Rob Bottin's legendary practical effects work giving it an edge over so many other films of the era. When it comes to the body horror subgenre, this is a fan favourite. It only takes one look at the fates of some of the victims of The Thing 
Queen to agree that this is one of the worst fates out there. You don't get a peaceful death and your family doesn't get to bury your intact body. Instead, you become assimilated into an alien mass. The fact that the thing can imitate and replicate a victim's appearance and mannerisms is just another kick in the teeth, allowing a corrupted, cheapened version of yourself to appear alive after you've already been killed. There's no dignity in the death or the almost life afterwards. Overall, to be gotten by this guy sucks pretty bad. 5. Color Out of Space Fusing with your own son The fact that it's based on an HP Lovecraft story says enough. Color Out of Space is a bizarre mishmash of a movie that ticks loads of body horror trope boxes, not least in what happens to Teresa Gardner and her young son Jack. The event plays out as Teresa rushes to save her son Jack when she hears him screaming. If she'd just stayed away though, it probably would have ended up better for the both of them. A bolt of color fuses this mother and son duo together. The result of this fusion is a twisted mass that is truly quite a disturbing sight and this hybrid creature only becomes more and more disfigured and meshed together as the film progresses. For Teresa and Jack, it's an awful fate that makes the pair's bond a very literal one, as the two both lose their humanity and sanity as their fusion continues to intensify and mutate. It takes a long time for him to work up the nerve, but eventually the father, Nathan, puts the two out of their misery, and it really is a mercy killing if I've ever seen one. 4. The Human Centipede 2 – Running Over Your Newborn Baby Tom Six's Human Centipede movies are nothing if not a tough watch. Some people think the films are brilliant, depraved fun, others are normal, well-adjusted people. When it comes to The Human Centipede 2, it's Catherine Templar's Rachel who faces a particularly horrific fate. By the time the sequel concludes, Rachel is pretty much the only survivor of Martin's experiment in creating the first movie Centipede again, but worse. The pregnant Rachel unfortunately becomes part of the 12 people selected to make up Martin's centipede. In a twist of fate, Rachel is actually discarded after Martin believes she's dead. Slumped in a corner, Templar's character has to watch the rest of the group go through all the trauma they're subjected to, in turn, giving her a good amount of trauma herself. If that wasn't grim enough already, Rachel manages to escape in a nearby car, where she goes into labor, gives birth, and then accidentally runs over her newborn baby. There are lines you really don't cross in movies, and this... This should have been one of them. 3. Terrifier Seeing your loved ones brutalized, then yourself mutilated. 2018's Terrifier is every inch a slasher movie. The thing is, it's hard not to see the ultimate fate of poor Vicky and not get major body horror vibes. The picture famously sees Art the Clown going on a killing spree that throws up some of the most twisted, disgusting deaths that the horror genre has seen in recent years. And whilst Vicky does end up surviving the movie, her fate is a truly grim one. As Terrifier opens, we're shown a severely disfigured woman woman being interviewed on a talk show. We don't get her name, but we're informed that this is the only survivor of a massacre carried out by the aforementioned Art. The disfigured woman attacks the TV host and then we're off to the races with Terrifier as we see Art stalking a couple of friends at a pizzeria. It's only when Terrifier ends that we find Vicky, the sister of one of the girls being stalked and eventually killed by Art, is the disfigured person from the movie's opening. Not only did Vicky have to find the dead, mutilated body of her sister, she herself was attacked by Art and had her face eaten by the creepy clown. These are all now memories and scars that she has to relive on a daily basis. 2. Martyrs Being pushed as far as humanly possible Martyrs is a unique movie in that it's unrelentingly gruesome, yet genuinely it's still pretty high quality. More often than not, grim pictures tend to pile on the gore as a way to paper over the cracks of a weak story. With Martyrs, though, the gore and twisted happenings are pivotal to establishing the story and driving forward the narrative. For Anna, she has a fate that is very much worse than death. In fact, it's basically one step away from death and just shy of getting over that final finish line. Having discovered an underground society who are on a quest to discover and capture true euphoria, Anna becomes their latest test subject. The logic of said society is that they want to push the human body and spirit as far as possible in the pain stakes, which in theory should cross over from pain to ultimate pleasure. Because yes, I'm entirely sure that's how the human body works, just don't question it. What this means for Anna is that she's tortured and then literally skinned alive, pushed to the most extreme levels of pain but not quite far enough to die. It's it's one of the worst fates you could ever wish on anyone, and the movie pulls no punches in showing us that. 1. Freaks Turned into a human duck 
I've definitely said before how I feel about the film Tusk, and this is just Tusk before Tusk was ever Tusk. From director Todd Browning, 1932's Freaks is a movie that was utterly slated upon its initial release. However, since then it has gone on to find its own niche audience. Trippie's artist Cleopatra joins a carnival sideshow was part of a plan to con fellow performer Hans out of his inheritance. She doesn't know that this plan is not going to end well for her though. Having wooed and seduced Hans, Cleopatra lets her real intentions be known at the pair's wedding celebrations, which I must state is a really stupid idea. And with that, a plan of revenge is put in motion by Hans and the rest of the carnival crew who had been mocked by Cleopatra and her real lover, Hercules. That revenge culminates with Cleopatra being tortured and turned into what's dubbed a human duck. With her tongue removed, an eye pulled out, her hands melted, her legs cut off, and her upper body tarred and feathered. It's definitely a unique punishment, to say the least, and one that I'll be happy to never see or hear about ever again. And with that, we've reached the end of this list of 10 more body horror fates worse than death. And yes, of course, there's more out there, so please drop them in the comments below so we can all look at them and have a horrible time. If you want to have a good time, though, remember to check out whatculture.com for more lists and articles like this every single day. As always, I've been Amy from What Culture, and I'll catch you next time.